Welcome to Rock Shop Talk. Our show talks best practices, fun anecdotes, and the latest cutting edge technology in our field to kick your screen printing gears into hyperdrive. Today's episode features the topic of women rock movement, celebrating women in business and how to get involved. And we're joined by myself, Victoria Jones of Inbound Inc., Adrian Palmer, Editor-in-Chief of Screen Printing Magazine, Kristen Souza, and Jennifer Shaw of Rock US. The Rock US tour bus is actually almost ready for our first US tour, though we'll be refraining from beginning the tour until it's actually safe to travel for the long term. To follow the tour and even reserve a visit when we come through your town, follow hashtag Rock US tour on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be right back. So I want to welcome everybody back. Today's episode features a topic of the Women Rock Movement, celebrating women in business and how to get involved. We are joined by our special guest, Adrian Palmer, editor-in-chief of Screen Printing Magazine, Vic Jones of Inbound Inc., Kristen Sousa and Jennifer Shaw of Rock US, and I am Rock US President Ross Hunter, joined alongside of our creative director, Mr. Merrill Caps. Hello, thank you for having me. So I want to kind of kick today's episode off, um, and we'll start with uh, Vic and kind of move around. And our first question of the day is to tell us how you got into screen printing and what inspired you to pursue this crazy fun path of an industry that we're in. You got it right. It is definitely crazy and definitely fun. Um, it's one of those things. I actually, my dad is a graphic designer and an artist, and he uh, he went to school on on an art scholarship. And while he was there, he um, kind of you know played with the screen printing industry for a bit. I had no idea about this until um, I think I was in high school, and I stumbled upon boxes of shirts he had upstairs that he had kind of designed and helped create. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. At this point, I had no idea it was anything I wanted to do. I didn't think twice about it. I was like, I have some rad shirts, like let's rock them. And I was happy. Um, long story short, I got to college and I went into the field of bio pre-med, which is completely different than what I'm doing now. And I'm very thankful for that, but I'm also thankful for having put myself through it, but long story short, I learned that's not what I wanted to do. And so while I was in college, I uh, had this idea of all these things I was seeing in my biology classes and slides and um, textbooks that this stuff is cool, man, like should be on t-shirts. So I started an apparel line called Merge and basically it was merging art with science and um, designed a bunch of t-shirts, went to festivals, that kind of thing. Long story short, um, decided that I got sick of outsourcing. I wanted to kind of have more flexibility with colors, numbers of prints, and basically started doing research and questioning every single human that I knew that had anything to do with uh, screen printing or t-shirts. And from there fell into the industry. And after that, it was no turning back. And I love it. And it's a passion and I'm excited every single day to wake up and, and go to work. So that's kind of how I got into it. That's awesome. That's the true dream, right? When you can wake up and you're just like jazzed. Absolutely. I feel the same way. I love this industry. It's very cool in that sense. Absolutely. Um, we'll come over to our, our team here, Jen. What yeah. what wound you up uh, here at, at Rock and in this industry? I know this Long is a story short. <laughs> Long story short, uh, being in the industry, event industry for 12 years, owning my own business for eight um, I had touched and feel felt everything as far as making cakes, bartending, catering, you name it. And then I just finally got to the point where I just wasn't happy anymore. I didn't wake up happy anymore. Um, and so I started looking for a new career. I wasn't looking for a job. I was looking for a place that met my personality because I am a very people person. Um, I love, I love people. I love customers. I love helping people. And in turn, that's just kind of where I survive. Um, and I wasn't getting that from my other business. So when I read everything about Rock and Ryan and saw what their values were, and then I came in for a Q&A and I was like, oh my God, I have to work here. I have to work here. These are my people. Like, this is what I'm looking for. And I just connected. And ever since I've been here, I, I wake up with a smile every day. I feel like I'm helping and I feel like they appreciate that I'm here. That's awesome. We do. 
we, yeah, we definitely yeah. do. Kristen. Hey guys. Hey. Um, so my journey with screen printing has been kind of all over the place. Um, I went to design school and there was a course that I had to take in order to graduate. And it was a book arts course. And I dreaded having to do it. And I pushed it off for probably two years because I'm thinking book arts, six hours on a Saturday. I don't want to do like, I don't want to do this. But then that's when I got introduced um, into print methods. Um, and I was curious about more after the course. And that really kind of steered my complete direction into what I wanted to do. Um, from there, I went into letterpress printing and got really the fundamentals of that process. Um, and then the process, that's what I was so stuck with and what I'm so passionate about and still with screen printing. Um, and then I, you know, I lived in San Francisco. I couldn't afford or have space for a huge letterpress machine. So that's when I was like screen printing, actually, that's much more feasible. I could figure out some kind of hinge system or something and this was prior to YouTube, resources, anything. So kind of like I said in the intro, I messed up. I can't tell you how many rugs. I was blindly in my <laughs> bathroom, like exposing screens with the light off because I didn't know, you know. So it's been like I've gone through that and then and then figured out my process and then was introduced to Rynet. And, you know, I really got to learn how shops operate and what they need, what they you know, strive for. Um, and then, you know, now I'm with Rock US and doing and learning much more about the automatic side. So really I have like this very odd <laughs> full circle experience in the industry. And I'm, I, I, the industry is what keeps me here. I'm so passionate about it and the art, the process, all of it. It's awesome. Awesome. Adrian. Yeah. What so brings you into this? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm fairly new to the screen printing industry. Um, about seven and a half years ago, I joined Big Picture Magazine, which is on the wide format digital print side. And so I've been part of the print community, which was, seems like forever. I really don't know what other industry I would be in other than print. And uh, about a year, year or so ago, um, I joined our sister publication as the editor-in-chief of Screen Printing Magazine. So about a year in, um, and also a great community to be a part of. My first uh, event was SGI's WB camp. And I showed up um, dressed as I would to go to a wide format conference, which is business casual. And I immediately was like, oh, I'm overdressed. Um, but it was so amazing how everyone was so welcoming and immediately bringing me in, showing me things, uh, saying, this is what you should cover in the magazine. This is how the magazine should be. You should meet this person. You should talk to this person. Um, so it's been incredible to be a part of this. And um, I remember not really being sure if I wanted to add on a different uh, magazine. You know, I felt so connected to big picture and the wide format industry. Went to that first conference. I texted my fiance. I was like, dang it. I love this industry and uh, there's no going back now. <laughs> I'm part of it. That's awesome. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, so I know we all kind of have different experiences through the industry. And um, while so much of it is positive, um, I know for myself and I'm sure others as well has faced some obstacles um, in kind of their journey. And so I know, you know, one thing that we were really wanting to talk about is just kind of going through and expressing some of, you know, the obstacles that you've personally faced or that you've seen or experienced other people also have similar experiences or different. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, there's obstacles in everything you do. And um, for me, I, I think my initial obstacle was how am I going to do this? Um, I had an idea and I didn't know exactly how to execute that idea. I didn't see a lot of people who looked like me in this industry, which, um, I, you know, I didn't really know where to start. So obviously the internet is a huge tool, Google's a huge tool. And through that, I um, was able to, to get information that I needed that was helpful. Long story short, it was take this money and buy a car or take this money and um, try to start a business that be, I think, you might be into it. If not, 
you just didn't have a car at the end of it. So long story short, I think that was my biggest obstacle was figuring out how I was going to do it, who I could talk to, finding resources. And through it all, um, once you get your equipment, trying to figure out, okay, now how do I do this? And, and just like you, you messed up so many rugs and messed up so many things. I mean, the number of shirts that I could count when I first started doing this, luckily they were my own. Um, it, it's unbelievable. But through that, I learned through that process. And that was probably my biggest obstacles, obstacles starting out. Um, and then along the way, I mean, you know, so many learning experiences and so many um, hiccups that if you take it one way, you might put yourself out. If you take it the other way, you just learn from it and grow. And I feel like that's kind of the way I've taken most of those. So. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. As you had mentioned, um, you didn't really feel like you looked around and maybe you didn't see anyone who looked like you. I remember my first trade show was um, the ISA Expo in Las Vegas. And I walked in and I was like, and I was 22 or 23. It's like, I don't fit in here. Yeah. No offense, but it was a bunch of white middle-aged guys in khakis and polos. And I was just like, <laughs> no, this is not what I signed up for. Um, and it's a big reason we launched the Women in Print Awards through Big Picture, because I knew that there were women in this industry. I just wasn't seeing them at events at all. Um, and so with our first award five years ago, we had 50 or 60 nominations come flooding in for women in the industry. We're in our fifth year now. And so I, I don't feel that way anymore, but I definitely did. Um, I'm also part of Printing United's Women in Print Alliance, where um, a lot of women who are part of the board and the conversations that I've had with uh, women in print winners in the past have said, you know, I walk up to a booth at a trade show and I'm asked, where, where is your husband? Or, you know, you're not, you're not the buyer here, or they're just totally dismissed. And it's like, well, actually I'm the owner of the company or I'm the founder or I'm the CEO. So it's, you know, it's been hard to hear that that has been a struggle for so many um, women in the industry. And I hope that conversations like this and communities that are built and awards that are given can really uh, eliminate that because, as you guys know, women rock and we typically run this stuff. So <laughs> yeah, that is the truth. <laughs> but to, yeah. And to your point, um, and I should have been more specific um, because in screen printing, obviously we have so many obstacles that we have to figure out technically, but I think um, being a woman in the industry, we have an additional pressure and additional, you know, all these external things that we have to be mindful of in order for us to really get to where we need to go and to be seen in those, in, you know, in the trade show floors and all that. Um, so, yeah, I guess like uh, for me, I've just experienced, you know, I think unfortunately every gamut of, I think, uh, you know, inequality, whether it be uh, pay injustice from, you know, be doing the same job that my male counterpart has done, um, you know, every from sexual harassment to it's like all of these things um, that we've seen kind of come about in, you know, over the past few years, even in not just our industry, but an overarching issue. Um, so that's kind of, you know, one pointed question is just more specifically being a woman in this industry what you know experiences have you had to overcome in in those particular obstacles Vic I know you talked about um you know just the business side but have is it kind of the same for you or absolutely I mean I to this day people walk into my shop and you know I greet them and you know, chat with them. And at the end of it all, they go to pick up a business card and they're like, oh, this is yours. You know, like they're looking for somebody else that that should should be the face of, of what it is I'm presenting. So, um, you know, it's something that I try not to take personally. And I try to 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 walk into it as, OK, I this is my opportunity to show people that, hey, we're here and we can do this just as as good as anybody else. And and that's also what I love about it, the surprise factor and the fact that, you know, eventually, hopefully, um, we get to that point where it's no longer something to even think about. So uh, a lot of times I'll host, um, whether it's, you know, a group of uh, students or, or Girl Scouts, or whether it's 
um, working with boys and girls clubs and, and doing stuff like that to really try to not just put a face to this industry that maybe you haven't seen before. And a lot of people don't know too much about the industry, but um, when they do, they find it pretty fascinating, I'd say. But uh, I think putting um, putting a face that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see um, onto it. And so I definitely see those things every day. I know at trade shows myself when I go in, it's, it's, it's almost like I look like I'm 12. So they're like, where's your parents <laughs> kind of thing. But um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it happens and it's a matter of, of how you, you deal with it in my mind. And I'm, I'm ready to just, as a, as a female business owner in this industry, ready to really like put my foot forward and say, man, we got this and we do amazing stuff just as like anybody else. And at the end of the day, a customer wants amazing work. Why can't we do that? You know, Absolutely. true that. I kind of have a piggyback question. You know, we, we just got done doing a diversity and inclusion podcast two weeks ago that came out in two parts. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I mean, women rock really folds into that same, you know, uh, what word am I well, looking for? Uh, milieu. I mean, it's the yeah. same realm of, you know, underlying issues. And we've, we've kind of heard the same actual thing about shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you guys just brought up, right. That, you know, you walk in and you don't see other people like you or as many people like you. And five years ago, Adrian, you went into something and you're like, uh, you know, turn around, get me out of here. Like this, this isn't my jam. What do you both think, or I mean, anyone for that matter, are ways that we can change that? Because it's, you know, this is a conversation, obviously this is a step, but we, we personally, we actually met this morning, we're, we're starting a whole diversity and inclusion team that's going to involve, you know, our partners like Vic and, and, and other people that were on our podcast and, you know, Adrian, I'd love for, for your organization to be involved too. So we're trying to really paint a bigger picture here and we're, we're trying to come up with actionable items. And we obviously work with the shows and, and all the different organizations. So what are, what are some things that you guys see could be done? So when we are in this group setting where the industry gets together there's not this outsider kind of feel that it, it feels comfortable. It feels uh, collaborative. It feels like everyone's involved. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? I have a lot of thoughts on that. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just kind of had a conversation about this um, with a virtual conference that happened a couple weeks ago. And I was on a panel, um, a women in print panel. And it had you know, glowing remarks. Um, everything went really well. And then they, the award or the um, event coordinator said, "Wow, forty percent of the attendees were women." And then a conversation started. Okay, but the only women that you had as speakers were on a women in front panel. So I think mm -hmm. the first thing is to not just have women speakers on a women in print panel, but have women speakers throughout your entire conference. Have women in your edit in our editorial coverage. Um, you know, it's not it, having the conversation is huge. Having awards are great. Having panels and podcasts and events surrounding women, having boards, alliances. Yes, these are great things, but we're not just here as women. You know, I Vic is a, a business owner. That's what she's here for. And so I think it's tough because. I spoke with Meryl yesterday. I got an email that I get often. When are the white men awards happening? Um, you know, those are, that's not what this is about. You know, we're recognizing women in the industry because they haven't been recognized before. Do I want to have this award in five years? Do I want to have it now? Not really, but we have to because women are not being nominated or covered in any other platform. Um, our annual Rising Stars Awards for screen printing last year, uh, only white men were nominated. Wow. And someone commented when we um, launched the winners, this isn't you know re reflective of the industry. And I said, I couldn't agree more, but no one's nominating anyone of color, any woman. Mm -hmm. So we need to be better as a print industry. And I will also say that I, as a white woman, will never understand the hardships of someone who is a person of color. So I really, the, 
the diversity there is a little bit, I think, different. I think women do deal with a lot of rough crap. I was called a little girl on the phone just a couple months ago. So uh, we go through it. But um, I think the conversation about diversity is a little bit larger. Um, But at the end of the day, I think that, you know, my goal as editor in chief of screen printing is to be representative, our coverage to be representative of everyone in the industry. And yeah. I said, I said like, a lot of stuff to say. So. No, that was great. That it's, was amazing. It sounds like providing, uh, we, we heard this last week, but providing a seat at the table. Like our industry has this like group that's like this big, mm-hmm. that's at the top, I guess, of whatever you want to call it. But it's been that same click, right, of, of middle-aged white men, some of them older now, right? And it's kind of those are the people that are bringing in speakers that are the ones speaking themselves. And it's like the same people. I mean, I've been in the trade show circuit for God, 12 years now, and it's the same people. <laughs> it's never changed. And so we're not providing an opportunity within the industry for change. And what's interesting is processes have changed and the way that you do things have changed. And they're not even keeping up with that. So, you know, it's, 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 it, that's what it sounded like to me is just more seats at the table more opportunities um, for people to get up and be in front of, of, of everyone. So that's really great. But also don't just add us to check a box because you need to add a woman. Mm -hmm. We need to be there because of our accolades and our experience and our work. Yeah. To kind of touch back on the trade show. Oh, can you you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, to kind of go back to the trade show topic, um, I remember the first trade show that I went to a few years back and kind of walking the floor, you know, I never saw too many um, just female representation other than models on the floor. And it always seemed very odd to almost sexualize that, you know, in order. And it's, it's kind of not, it, I don't know, sleazy in a way. And to touch back on Amber Macy, who was on the diversity one, um, she she walked around and, and didn't see her at all and felt more comfortable, obviously, talking to the men because she understands the process, but not necessarily the men took her seriously and instead talked to her dad, you know? So, yeah. like, the actual visual representation also in a very genuine way not a forced way like what you're saying checking a box oh well she's a female so we're good but actually including women in the industry that understand the process and can have you know really nerdy conversations around like what we love to do so much and I think that goes a long much much longer way yeah the booth babe comment that you made um at the women in print breakfast that we have each year at printing united i made a plea in front of 200 women who were our manufacturers they are marketers they're anyone in this industry print shop owners i said can we please get rid of the booth babe it it is for the male gaze it is not right because you have you know people coming up to the booth for wrong reasons and then unfortunately they ask these women who are typically scantily clad a question about the product they don't know anything about the product um so there's really there's no point in having them um and i would love to see more manufacturers move away from that at trade shows moving forward Vic, did you have anything to add to? Um, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. And and like I said, every every trade show I've attended, it's always been the it's it's never the norm to see someone that looks like me. And I was gonna say, um, similar situation. When you go in to listen to somebody speak, it's never I I haven't I've never seen a, a female panelist or someone who um probably not even probably has the same information that could, you know, relay that information, maybe even better. And I've, n- I've never seen that. So I definitely, I couldn't agree more with that. And I think it's, um, I think that's important is, is seeing, um, seeing that, which would then lead to more respect in the industry, you know, for, for us. And, and yeah, that's kind of, I couldn't agree more. The Screen Printing Women in Screen Printing Awards 
were launched in June this year at the Shirt Lab Summit. And thankful that you guys are our exclusive sponsors. You can nominate a woman in screen printing through August 4th. And the nomination link can be found at screenweb.com slash women print. And the nomination form is just about two pages. Uh, you fill out your information and then you fill out your nominee's information, some background, her experience. If there's any philanthropic roles there, um, you know, what she's done to advance the screen printing industry in general. Um, anything that you find to be a reason why um, this woman would be uh, a great nominee. And um, the winners will be announced in the screen printing October, November issue. And um, we're working on a really cool way to virtually announce these winners um, as so many events have been canceled this year due to COVID. So that, uh, yeah. initially that was going to be at Print United? Yeah. Um, so we were going to announce the winners um, with the Big Picture Women in Wide Format Award winners at uh, Printy United. We were looking to do um, a really big event, and that's obviously not going to happen in person. And um, so we're going to try to do our own uh, maybe full day event with some some other fun things that are uh, uh, connected to women in the industry for both brands. So it's something to look forward to. Um, but yeah, definitely nominate female leaders in the industry. We've got uh, about a, a month left now. We already have um, more than 20 nominations coming in. So it's exciting to see. Fantastic. So just for our listeners out there, um, obviously anyone anyone can nominate if they go to the website. But you, where are the majority of those nominations coming from? Like, are you guys looking... I'm, I'm assuming I'm making an assumption here, so correct me if I'm wrong, but really towards the manufacturers, right, that have, that are working with, you know, our customers. So in perspective, us with Vic, right? Vic's a rock owner. She's a female business owner. We know that. Um, her customers wouldn't know that, you know, there's this great thing unless she boasted it herself on, you know, Facebook or whatever and provided the link. So for any of the manufacturers out there that are listening to to this podcast, I mean, what would you say to them in terms of getting involved so we can start to see this, you know, grow into what it really should be? Yeah, I hope you nominate Vic because she is deserving of the award. Um, but so basically, yeah, manufacturers, if you have clients who are female business owners that you feel are deserving of the award, just go to the site and nominate them. Um, we get nominations from manufacturers. We get nominations from um, employees of the business owner, um, even just peers within the industry. So we, I mean, women have nominated themselves before. So there's no shame in that either. It's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, so we're going to take a quick commercial break and we will come back and continue our Women Rock conversation. To honor today's female leaders, Screen Printing Magazine is looking for six accomplished women who through their careers, industry involvement, and philanthropic roles have sparked innovation, spurred business growth, improved their communities, and enhanced the screen printing industry. Nominees must hold a leadership position at a company that produces screen printing as its primary function. Honorees will appear in the Screen Printing Magazine October and November 2020 issue. To nominate the rocking women screen printing in your life, please visit screenweb.com slash womenprint no later than August 4th, 2020. I want to welcome everybody back to Rock Shop Talk, your one-stop rock shop where we discuss all things screen printing. Today's episode features the topic of women rock, and we are celebrating women in business and learning about how to get more people involved in this movement. We are joined today by our special guest, Adrian Palmer, editor-in-chief of Screen Printing Magazine. We are joined by Vic Jones of Inbound Inc. and uh, two of our, or I guess three of our very own, Ms. Kristen Sousa, Ms. Jennifer Shaw, and Mr. Merrill Caps of Rock US. So let's dive back in. Kristen, I think you had a question. Yes, I sure did. Um, so we have uh, Women Rock, and I in the initially was thinking, well, by having a women, a Women Rock group, is still relative, I mean, that's still separating women from the men in the industry. Um, it's still kind of 
creating this group that's not included. Um, so one question was to discuss kind of the positive and negatives of using group specific, um, you know, either initiatives, hashtags, whatever you want to call it. Um, what do you think is ultimately better? Um, I know just for me, I know that, you know, we can't necessarily create change without starting somewhere. So there's definitely a positive in it. I was just curious to get your guys' take on it. Vic? Um, I absolutely think that, like you said, you, ha you have to start somewhere. And it's one of those things like, ho hopefully, and I'm confident that it will become the norm at some point where we no longer have to do that or do this. And I think it is important that you and we all do it in a way that is, um, you know, not, I think there's a way to go about it. And I think right now I feel like the way that we are going about it is, is the right way. And that, you know, just kind of diving into it um, where you understand that there's a problem and once you understand there's a problem, you, you can form, formulate a solution. And I think that um, once that solution has, you know, come to be, then it's one of those things that I think it shouldn't be necessary. So it's kind of my yeah. thought. Awesome. Yeah. Adrian. Yeah, I, I feel like, um, you know, being part of the Women in Print Alliance board and, and going to breakfast where you look around and there are 200 women in the print industry, there, that, there's so much positivity there. And it's not exclusive or it, we're not, you know, excluding men. You can't have movements without allies that don't look like you. You know, there, there are so many men in the industry who are advocates and allies and are part of the group as well. And I think that that has to continue. But you know, as we spoke a little bit before, women deal with things that men don't. And so to have mentorship and to have community and to be able to be part of a group where you can ask somebody, you know, hey, I'm new to this, but you've been in it for 20 years. You know, what can I what can I learn from you? Um, I think that there's so much positivity in that. Um, and as long as we're being open to saying that anybody can join this and anybody can share their views, then I don't I don't see any negative negative toward it. Absolutely. Jennifer, how do you feel about this as a leader of women? Rock? I, I really like it. I think it gives us a platform to find each other um, and kind of show everybody that there is other women screen printers out there. I've met some amazing people just through that. Alexa, things like that. And I feel like they're there. I mean, I love when there was some content of just screen printers going back and forth and asking each other questions and not even feeling like there was, it was, they shouldn't have to feel like there's a dumb question because there isn't, there really, really isn't like people need help. And it's nice to have a place where they feel like they can express themselves and not feel like someone's going to point a finger and think, oh my God, why did she ask that? Um, you know, but for the most part, I love it because people can find each other in one space and help each other from there. And hopefully, like you said, we don't need this later. You know, I don't have it closed. We've got men and women all all in there. And I think the most exciting part was when we had the t-shirt contest. There was not just screen printers coming in on that. There was family and friends of those shops coming in to sponsor those. Um, so we're not only just bringing in the screen printers, we're bringing in their support around them and letting them have a place to have an outlet and keep going. And that's what we all need. We all need people to support us and help us grow. Vic, for um, your business, how have you been inspiring people? I know that you have a sports background. Um, does that play a lot in your designs, in your inspiration, as far as like helping impact people's people around? I totally botched that, but <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been botching things this entire thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, essentially, having played sports, I think I have that competitive edge and you know I like to compete and I think that's why I I mean I had an older brother like boy dog cat whatever like I want to win and I want to do the best I can and if that puts me ahead of you as far as like being you great if it doesn't that means I need to work harder so it's one of those things like I'm thankful for my sports background um but I think it has allowed me to reach um you know, a different network of people. And like I said, like one of the things I really like to do is just have 
kids, whether it's from the YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, just come in and like see, like just learn what screen printing is. And, you know, behind it is my face cool, whether it's me or not. Like, I still think it's just an amazing industry and you can learn so much about yourself. And it's such a, uh, it's just so creative, but at the same time, it's so structured and there's just so much to it. Um, And so I think when, when, when that comes, um, comes together and, and, I'm able to reach out to, you know, whether it's sports team or youth, you know, youth league or whatever. I, I feel like it's, it's that much more meaningful. I love printing for sports teams and um, little league teams and things like that. Cause that's, that's my passion. I love sports and to have it come together is huge. Um, I think I answered your question, but yeah. if not, um, no, I will definitely. try again. <laughs> I can see that being a passion because you know how that feels to be, you know, a kid on a new sports team and get that jersey yeah. that has but, your number with your name on it. Absolutely. You know, and it's so freaking cool because you yeah. kind of feel like a part of something and you get to help do that. I think that's what I really like about screen printing is it's not just printing something on a t-shirt. It really right. isn't. It, there's so many things. It's just the starting point. You know, yeah. printing a t-shirt for a fundraiser, a foundation, and that's going to help cancer or put food on someone's plate or give someone itself self-esteem they need. It's not just printing a shirt. It's just right. not. And I think that's what everybody kind of sees is they get to, it's a worldwide helping. Yeah, absolutely. And I was always that kid at playing sports. Like I wanted to know how everything worked. I was very inquisitive when it came out. So I wanted to know how that number and my name got on the shirt and how they got <laughs> that name on that shirt. I mean, I was right. always very intrigued by it. I had no idea I'd fall into it and learn how it all works. Um, but you know, it's funny how it, it comes, comes back around. So full circle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to kind of go back to what Adrian had said about, um, allyship. So from, from everyone here, um, from your perspective, how would you hope or like for men in our industry to act or to be the best allies to us in the industry? Adrienne? Um, Yeah, I mean, allowing the seat at the table. Um, if you're a business owner really looking at your pay equity and like, is someone getting paid more because they're a male? You know, those are, there's so many different steps that, that you can take um, to help out. And I would say, you know, being part of these conversations, if, if you see that there's a women in print panel, listen to it, you know, or go to it. Just, it's not just for, for women. Um, so yeah, I feel like getting involved, becoming part of the communities would be a number one step. And then as a, a male business owner, a manufacturer, or anything, anyone in this industry, really taking a look at how um, you're treating the women in your workforce, um, because it really is about actionable items conversation's great, but what are you doing to actually make change? Nice. Vic, how about you? Um, I mean, that's hard to, that's hard to follow. That's an, that's the (laughs) answer. I mean, that Adrian said it best. And I think it's one of those things, um, listening, there's, there's nothing more powerful than just listening to somebody. And, um, you don't necessarily always have to agree with some, with, with what someone's saying, but if you listen, you know, it goes a long way and you might learn something yourself along the way. So I think having that seat at the table, understanding that, um, you know, what we have to say has, has value and, and, um, you know, seeing past that, seeing past that I'm, I'm a female in the industry and, and that I can, um, I, I'm just as valuable. And so I think that's kind of, kind of how Adrian said it best. Absolutely. Yeah, the listening thing is huge. Um, That's one thing that I noted when I was kind of looking over the questions. And then also a lot of like what Nick had said in the previous um, diversity panel, um, mostly about, you know, white men in the industry have held the power the most. And so while listening is a really great first step, um, we also need again, that allyship by stepping up when you see something or, or hearing an inappropriate comment or, you know, men help a lot in those situations. Cause I know I've been in situations where I voice something where it's, you know, 
not a great situation and I'm looking for change, but I'm not heard until a man steps in. That has happened to me. I can't tell you how many times. Um, so that I know would be absolutely huge also is just the help in bolstering us. Yeah. And it's sometimes uncomfortable. I know that, yeah. but mm-hmm. that if you can't handle that, then the change is never going to happen. Mm-hmm. We are going to take another quick commercial break and we will be right back to continue our discussion. Thank you all who tuned in to our special two-part episode on diversity and inclusion in decorated apparel. In case you missed it, please visit rock.us slash rock shop talk. We need your help in choosing a hashtag that meets the call to action this moment in history deserves. Please email us at hello at rock.us with your ideas. I want to welcome everybody back to Rock Shop Talk, your one-stop rock shop where we discuss all things screen printing. Today's topic is our women rock movement, celebrating women in business and how to get involved. We are joined by our special guest, Adrian Palmer, editor-in-chief of Screen Printing Magazine, Vic Jones of Inbound Inc., and our Kristen Sousa, and Jen Shaw, Jennifer Shaw and Meryl Caps of Rock US. So let's dive back in, Krista. Um, Adrian, you talked a little bit about Print Alliance and what and your work with them. Is there anything we didn't touch on that you wanted to add more? Um, yeah, so uh, formerly SGIA, now Printing United Alliance, They're, they have uh, many different boards. As you guys probably know, the Garment Decorators Board is one, um, Board of Directors, et cetera. And so they have a Women in Print Alliance Board. We were kind of a group for about four or five years just on the side and we became an official uh, board in January of 2019. So it's a group of uh, 10 to 15 women in the industry, from manufacturers to print owners to um, uh, some people who are actually within the, the Printing United Alliance group. And yeah, we we get together once a month and we focus on ways that we can build a community through mentorship, um, our breakfast every year at Printing United, which is going to be look a little bit different um, as it's not an in-person event, but it's a really great network to be a part of. Um, if you ever have questions about um, the industry or, or need somebody to, to connect with, it's it's been really great for me. So far, so how do how do people get involved in these? You know, pro, a in the board and b um, know when there's different events and and luncheons and different you know things happening where they all get together because we'd love to be able to give you know our audience something after the fact and then continue to keep people updated right on you know through our resource pages and stuff on what's going on. So what what's the best way to get involved? For sure. Yeah. I mean, you can reach out to me directly, um, adrian.palmer at stmediagroup.com. And I can always just connect on a one-on-one level, um, screen, screenweb.com. Um, so screen printing's website, we always cover anything that's new or updated in terms of women in the industry. Um, the breakfast that we'll be figuring out (laughs) as, as we go on. And then I know printing United Alliance just changed their website name and of course I can't remember it right now but if you just google printing united alliance women in print um you'll be able to find it I just wrote a blog for them on how to use social media to promote your business so there's a blog there that's really you can anyone it's for anyone in the industry but there are some blogs that are that are specific to women so um one was during the quarantine and you know how are you handling being uh, for example, mom, partner, uh, teacher, and also working remotely. And that was a little bit more specific to women in the industry. So yeah, I would definitely check that out. Um, or just contact me directly. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Adrian underscore screen and LinkedIn email. I'm available all the time. Just don't cold call me because I'm a millennial and I will not answer that. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) I love the honesty. Right. <laughs> quick, quick side note on that. Um, I this is totally off the cuff, but since you brought it up, is from your experience has there been something unique to women in this industry dealing with COVID nineteen uh, slash quarantine? Have have you 
experienced something that perhaps we haven't as men in this industry. Um, and I don't know if this is a possible question or possible answer, but it's something that occurred to me to ask. So it, no is totally acceptable. Yeah, I was um, on a women in print panel for Feature Prints Virtual Summit with um, other women in the industry. And this was more of a European based uh, conference. So it was really interesting to hear how women um, abroad also were, were kind of dealing with the pandemic. I would say that um, just from what I've heard, I, I don't have children, so I don't know this you know, personally, but that it has just been a struggle trying to wear many different hats and adding teachers to the resume. And um, there are a lot of women who actually were used to being on the road and their partners were the ones mm. um, typically at home and then just trying to balance all of that again. Um, but yeah, personally, I didn't experience anything different other than I've been work from home for almost two years now. And all of a sudden my company wanted to see my face every day on zoom calls, which was never <laughs> wanted before. So. I don't know, Vic, have you anything for you on during, in terms of the pandemic? I don't think so. Not that I can think of. I mean, <laughs> my eye flashes. Is- Earth, earthquake <laughs> for the listeners oh you just missed something really epic um, tune tune in for the video version that was amazing <laughs> yes yeah but no not on my end no nothing I don't think that anybody else has like I I don't have I don't have kids yet either I have a puppy I did get a COVID puppy which has been quite the challenge and I'm trying to teach her to be a shop dog and um, so far, so great. But she does go to daycare a couple of days a week. But other than that, I mean, I have not seen or had to deal with wearing all the hats, which I can't imagine how how tough that's been. I do have friends who have kids. And I mean, I salute mm-hmm, them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been a lot of work. So I salute you on the puppy move. I <laughs> made the same move. And I've got a, how old is he now? A 12-week-old um golden retriever along with my five-year-old who was at home with us for about three months until um, school started back. So the puppy thing, I got to tell you, honestly, harder than the five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I've heard. I've heard dogs. If you can handle a dog, you can handle a kid. Now, I, I don't know how true that is until I have a child, but <laughs> she's been a handful. She Absolutely. has been a handful. What kind of dog? I have an Airedale, an Airedale Terrier. Wow. Oh, very cool. Cute, cute. Yeah. Jennifer, tell us about Women Rock. What is it? Why does it exist? How can people get involved? <laughs> <laughs> Women Rock was presented to me from Merrill, actually, when I um, shortly after I started with Rock, which was an honor to be asked. Uh, I, in the event industry, I haven't had to experience as much male dominance as especially when you're talking weddings. I mean, if you think about people in the wedding industry, it is more women related than it is men. Um, But there's a community that comes from all those women. I have made the best friends that I've ever had. I mean, I didn't jump into this industry wanting to bartend or cater or do those things. It was a way of, you just kind of fell into it because we have this way of wanting to help each other succeed and to grow. And when someone needs help, you just kind of jump in there. And that's, that's kind of what Women's Rock is, is I want this to be a platform where people know that they can just reach a handout and get help, um, that we can create a community that in turn can just kind of nudge in there and fit in with everybody else. I'm not saying in the, the event industry, there wasn't men, but it was just, we had network meetings and we just supported each other and we made reasons in order to communicate with each other and know each other and their business and, you know, and help them not make the same mistakes you may have made mm-hmm. in your business. So that way we can just save them a step. And that's what I want Women's Rock to be. And it's super easy to join. I promise. I don't not accept anybody. There's been a couple like weird ones that pop up that don't have any kind of information going with it I might delete those ones but for the most part if you're a real person and you're truly interested I will accept you to women's rock by all means just come on in um 
I haven't seen anything that was like too bad, you know, as far as like having to worry about booting anybody, but don't think I won't. <laughs> don't think I won't. If I see anybody in there that's like, you know, because I've got some men in there, you know, if they they start sexually harassing or anything else, then they are gone, like done. That's not what this is about. You know, Alexa looks amazing on her motorcycle. And I, I got a little edgy on one comment. I was like, no. Okay, wait. No, it's staying PG. We're good. I don't have to vote him because I almost made a phone call on that one. Um, and so, but you know, I mean, I, I want this to be a community to where we can all just help each other out. And maybe one day we don't have to have it labeled women's rock. Just we all freaking rock. <laughs> you know, that's that's all that I want. I like that. That's where we bring in rock your way. Heck yeah, yes. which is one of our other movements. It's just straight up rock your way. And that kind of like encompasses, I think, you know, everything that we're we're setting out this year to do. Um, what I mean, just feedback from anyone. What are some things that manufacturers specifically, and obviously we fall into that group and we're trying to grow and, and build upon this message as well as, you know, just a general message of diversity and inclusion. So we can kind of open this up to a full on just diversity inclusion talk, but specifically from a manufacturer's sense, you know, Vic, with you being a customer, Adrian, obviously you write about a, a lot of stuff that manufacturers put out. What can manufacturers in this industry be doing to ensure, you know, inclusion, you know, to ensure that they're sending, you know, a message out into the industry that's going to be received and hopefully spark change? I always feel like if you get like a couple manufacturers that are big enough to start to make a splash, right, then you know, hopefully, and, and typically speaking, the way that history works is everyone kind of follows suit. And that's how we're really going to make, you know, a bigger impact here with, um, you know, both with, with women and just in general with, with full on diversity and inclusion across all races, sexes, creeds, religions, etc. cetera. Um, what can we do? It's a big question, but. <laughs> um, I mean, I think we talked a little bit about it before, but um I do notice that sometimes it is some of the, the larger manufacturers who are still having the women at their booths who are dressed as Edward Scissorhands or, you know, whatever that, or Vegas, you know, showgirl. Um, I think that by making a stand, by not doing that anymore would be a really big step just to show that this isn't what this industry is about. And I know it's, it has changed. It's, there aren't as many, but I think that could be a step. Um, also, we talked a little bit about it too. A lot of manufacturers have um, user conferences and making sure that those user conferences are diversely attended. The speakers are diverse. Um, you know, women are involved in planning committees. Um, you know, manufacturers do a lot and on the back end. And um, I just think that maybe involving more women on your boards you know, I, you take a look at boards and it's like, whoa, there's not a single, maybe there's one woman, but I mean, I think that would be a big step too. just reevaluating everything that you're doing, making sure that you're more inclusive in terms of, of women in the industry. Awesome. Vic, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, Adrian said it best. <laughs> I, I, um, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think just being inclusive and, um, you know, being aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And if you don't have a reason as to why, then it probably can be reevaluated. So I think just being inclusive, you know, and, and, and seeing, seeing that when it's not. Do you guys think that like there's much of a marketing push? Cause I feel like a lot of times, right. What people see from companies is whatever the companies are putting out. I mean, do, do you see our industry is fairly diverse in the marketing sense? And I mean, this is from your t-shirt manufacturers through your equipment manufacturers, supply manufacturers, et cetera. Do you feel like that's a place that, you know, should and can change for, you know, these companies reaching out and bringing new people into the industry? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great that Vic, that you're bringing in younger kids. I mean, I think that 
may not be really the right answer to your question, but I think that educating younger people, especially females, to know that this industry does include you and this is an ind- this is a career path that you can go down is so important. Um, bringing ki- kids in at a younger age through early education. I talk about her all the time, but Ariel Swedro is a fashion designer in Miami, Florida, and she's 17 now and she screen prints and she digitally prints her entire um, swimwear line. And she goes to an art school, but it's not really connected to what she does at this after school program. And I think for people to see that there are young females in this industry too, and if manufacturers can highlight them, um, our manufacturers can work with uh, schools and and bring people in on a younger level. I think that's a really big thing. I know that wasn't exactly your question, but it's actually a great answer. We 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 talked about that this morning of actually partnering um, with our partners like Vic. You know, we've got this whole tour bus thing going on, and you know, one of the thoughts we had, and we want to do it locally here, but when we hit the road was to find shops that, you know, want to make change like Vic's already doing and actually help go in, bring the tour bus, have, you know, some small presses that we could give away to the Boys and Girls Club and, and do, you know, a whole demo, but do it with our partners. So it's not like us just as a manufacturer going out, but it's, it's us with, you know, our consumers join effort going out together and, you know, trying to make a change because, you know, the the more people, the bigger impact and the more that we can highlight that these things are going on. And and there's a ton of businesses out there already doing it. It's just, no one knows, you know, and it's such a special thing that, that more people should do. And I think that that's why people get into business. I mean, maybe their first thought is like, I want to get filthy rich. And so, you know, if they get into business and little did they know that, you know, that happens this often and definitely doesn't happen year one. Um, typically, you're probably sleeping in your business for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But, um, you know, I mean, the idea is I think I think most people get into business to to impact something. And there's a lot of different ways to have that impact, but it's like, if we can help lift up those companies that are out there making that impact and be a part of that, and then share that with the community of, of printers and manufacturers out there, it might start to, you know, spark a change that printing just isn't printing. And we talked about that earlier, right? It's, it's so much more. And I think that sometimes takes a backseat to the money and, and the process and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Like Vic, how cool would it have been when you were, you know, in your sports team and at a young age and you did go to a shop and see how exactly how your name was printed and your number was printed. Like you would have known the print industry at such a younger age and probably been like, oh, wait, this right. is really cool. Exactly. And, that, and that's what I'm going to say is like a lot of times the consumer has no idea on how shirts are made. And um, the the building I'm in, it's it's an amazing building, Rashu Ben. But there are so it. many artists. It's such it's such a rad building. It's so cool. But there there's artists in the building. It's just a community in itself. So um, we have what's called open studios twice a year. Obviously, this year is a little bit different. But um, anybody can come in, and they can come into your your space and see what it is you do. And I always have a live press set up and. You know, people can come in, print their own T-shirt. They have no idea. They had no idea how how this worked. And after they see it, it's I mean, it's so fun to watch and seeing kids come in and understand the process. And it's almost like you see a spark in their eye and they had no idea that this even existed. And they love it. And for me, if if I could just do that twice a year, I'd be happy. Um, if I could do that every day, I'd be happy. Um, but it's one of those things like. I think the consumer needs to understand what screen printing is. And once, once a consumer actually understands that, if we can bring that to, you know, to kids, like, like you're saying, Adrian, to, to kids who may have no idea that could essentially spark it and to see a face behind it that they might, you know, relate to an African-American, a female, a male, whoever it is that they might in that moment relate to a younger person. You know what I mean? I feel like the industry is, is an older industry and, um, you know, like Russ said, once you're in it, you don't leave. 
and I understand why you grow old in it. You should, you should, you should want to, but I think really bringing people in and having them understand the process could spark and change a lot in that, in that in itself. Like I'm fairly new to this industry. If you look at the, the bigger picture and I think I am in the same boat, but like, I want to know more. I like, this has sparked so much interest in things that I didn't even know about, you know, being a, being a female in the industry. So I'm in the same boat. Like, I, I feel like had I had this information five, six years ago, I mean, this would have been amazing. Was it out there? Absolutely. Was I able to, to access it? No, for whatever reason, I was not personally, maybe I didn't search hard enough, but this is huge. And, you know, being able to, even in this, our conversation, um, having learned so much and resources that are out there, it's cool. So how do we get this mm-hmm. more people, everywhere. you know, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know Kristen, you've got a few things that you're a part of that aren't, I mean, they're kind of tied to this industry actually from a design standpoint. Do you want to speak a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I've been a member of AIGA. It's the American Institute of Graphic Arts. Um, they have chapters all over the U.S. Um, most, I mean, this is in the graphic design field, um, but within that, I mean, graphic design, kind of like Vic, your dad, you know, they go hand in hand together. Um, and then alongside that, there's also um, a group called Creative Mornings, which also hosts, um, it's like an hour long from usually, I think it's like 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, and they have themed conversations, not in its you know, geared towards the creative field, but they kind of expand on so many different, you know, I don't know, themes that we all go through, like this last month, I think was insecurity um, and how that, in, you know, goes into business, relationships, all that. Um, and I we're in Vancouver, Washington, so we're really close to Portland, Oregon. Um, so a lot with, you know, with Creative Mornings, I'm really active in, you know, just the creative communities. Um, when I first got into printing, like letterpress printing, I wanted to know more. My curiosity around the process was always spinning. And I want, I just asked so many questions, I, no holds bar. Like I, <laughs> I didn't care if it was stupid or whatever. I just wanted to learn. Um, and so in San Francisco, San Francisco center for the book, that's where I learned, um, letterpress. Uh, they touch on screen printing. Um, and then IPRC in Portland, um, they are an independent publishing resource center. Um, so it, in your local communities, there's tons of resources, especially in, you know, larger metropolitan areas. Um, that is a great way. I know COVID kind of put a damper on it, but I mean, that's a great way, like to get your feet in, to even ask those questions, see if you like those processes. Cause I had to see firsthand at IPRC, they had like a five hour course, like, you know, very like, here we go, here's screen printing 101 in five hours. And just to see, you know, that gave me enough to say, okay, I really, really can get into this. And then that's when that kind of opens the door to so many other questions you can ask and different avenues. And um, so I would, I would definitely recommend and urge people wanting to get into screen printing, you know, to start at your local level to start, I mean, and YouTube also obviously now has become such a big part of it. Um, But those I would highly, highly recommend. It's awesome. I think it's interesting to, you know, we've been very industry focused in this conversation and, I think it's important, you know, when you first get started, and I know I can speak for myself, it was all about printing. I was, you know, honing techniques. I was learning about the process. And I actually went to college and have a degree in printmaking. But when I printed on a t-shirt, it didn't work too well. No, no. <laughs> Did really good on paper. Yeah. Didn't do good on a shirt. But it was interesting, like through my journey in business, the, you know, the further I, I got into it, the more I got out of the industry to learn more and in those local communities attending, you know, marketing seminars and, you know, crazy self-help boot camps that always like sparked some life into me. And, you know, I'm like, Oh, I got to go back and do this. And, you know, one of the things we talked about on the last diversity podcast that, you know, led me to talk about this is to bring it in is, is, you know, there's tons of female entrepreneur groups that are in local communities, you know, as well as, you know, LGBTQ business organizations and all sorts of different resources. And I think sometimes, you know, part of our issue is we get honed in on the industry piece and forget about all this stuff that's in our community, which the more that we 
go utilize that, then the more we can bring back to the industry and say, wait, I just spent all this time with this amazing group of, of female entrepreneurs that are kicking ass. And this is what they're saying in their industries. And then we can learn from that and bring it into ours and, and, and implement more change. So I definitely tell people, you know, when, when I'm coaching in business, like start local and, and go to things that make you uncomfortable. Go, you know, that's kind of the fun of it, you know, and you get to learn so much more um, when you're in those situations. So, well, and yeah, and it's, it's funny too. Cause like in the initial phase of that, it's like kind of awkward cause you're a fish out of water, you know, yeah. and you're like vulnerable, you know, but the second that somebody like even answers a question, then that conversation, the back and forth, like, Oh my God, I didn't realize that. And then they add, it's just like this very, um, genuine conversation that happens that is inevitable to let you in. You know, it's mm-hmm. not, I think, people initially have this fear of like, oh, I'm an outsider. I, I don't fit in. But when in reality, we all start there and just end up together. Yeah. Forgive me. Everybody else would have way better uh, knowledge of this than I, but I believe there are some kind of um, either locally or even federally uh, sponsored um, loans for women in business. Um, I just don't know what they're called. Uh to give people, would anybody know? I think, I mean, typically you just go to your local SBA and okay. they've got SBA. all kinds yeah. of different information on different business loans that are available for minority groups. And mm-hmm. I mean, it really mm-hmm. covers the gambit. Um, and um, there's also a lot of resources at the SBA as well. I mean, you know, to educate yourself on on different, you know, business topics and, and there's a lot of resources there. So people should definitely um, look into that. Cool. I would say, though, if you are a male business owner, please don't add your wife as the owner of the company right. so you can get the loan because that's wow. not right. Yeah. Because then when I try to speak to the, the woman-owned business owner and I can't because that person doesn't know anything about the business. That's <laughs> Good call. Loophole fine. I didn't even think about that. Wow. Oh, no, it happens more than you know. Really? Wow. People I will are. say that about the SBA thing, I and I don't know, if, when I first started my business, I reached out to the SBA and I had a, a guidance counselor who I'd meet with, you know, twice a month. And he was amazingly helpful, which goes back to the point, there were no women that I, I could have had as a counselor, which, you know, looking back, that's something that should change. And I'm sure at this point, it, there are more options there. But as far as the industry I was looking into and things like that, that was an option. However, he was amazing and it was such a great experience. And he gave me some guidance that I, I definitely wouldn't be here if if I didn't have. So I think that was huge for me going in blind and having somebody really help guide me with that stuff. Nice. Good. Well, I I want to kind of just wrap up with final thoughts that anyone has. Um, how to find you at your businesses and what you do. Um, and uh, this was a great, great conversation. Yeah. And if there's anything that we didn't touch on that you would like to, now's the time, please. I mean, I'll, I'll start by saying and end by saying that, you know, like you guys have been preaching and we all should preach women rock. And I am very grateful and thankful that you guys invited me um, on here with you. Um, like I said, whether I, was, whether, <laughs> whether I was uh, useful or not, that's a whole different story, but I'm very thankful. And I, I will say that even in this hour and a half, I have learned a lot. So I'm appreciative of all of you. Um, and yeah, my, my business is Inbound Inc. You can find me at Inbound Inc. on Instagram or on Facebook, Inbound Inc. My name is Vic and I'm the owner there. So if you're ever around Boston, come see me. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Vic. And thank you for joining yeah. us. Adrian, any final thoughts? Yeah, what Vic said. Happy to be here. Thankful for you guys uh, for allowing me to have this platform. Again, thank you for being the exclusive sponsors of the first ever Women in Screen Printing Awards. Super excited for that. Um, It was great virtually meeting all of you. You can find me on Twitter at Adrian underscore screen or LinkedIn. You can find Screen Printing Magazine. Our website is screenweb.com. And our Instagram and Twitter is Screen Print Mag. We update it constantly, so you'll be able to find us pretty easily there. And I look forward to connecting uh, with anyone who's listening if they have more 
uh, questions about uh, women in print or the magazine in general. Awesome. Thanks, Adrian. And Jennifer and, and Kristen, any final thoughts for our listeners? Um, just, I mean, thank you for everyone's time. I know, I think the conversation can be somewhat, you know, uncomfortable sometimes, but those uncomfortable conversations really lead to actual change. And so having other voices that have the same experiences that we all do to actually step up and talk about it is definitely in the right direction. So thank you guys all for this. Awesome. Thank you. Jennifer? For me, I just hope that we show each other enough support in this industry that everyone will see that women rock and it will just be a normal thing and not just in this industry worldwide, that we need to have a woman's presence everywhere. It shouldn't be something that's abnormal and has to be recognized because it's, there's a lack of, it should have been normal in the beginning, but mm -hmm. we'll get there. We'll definitely get there. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. This has been uh, an awesome uh, episode. We're going to continue this conversation as well as our diversity inclusion conversations um, indefinitely. Um, I love to say that because it's something that we're really um, passionate and excited to bring into our culture, um, not only just internally here at Rock US, but our culture within this entire industry. Um, you know, across the board, it's a big industry and a lot of places we can make impact. And, you know, to Jennifer's point worldwide, um, there's a lot of injustices in this industry all over the world um, from, you know, cotton manufacturers to people spinning yarn all the way through printing. And so we've got a, a long road and a lot of work to do, um, but we're very, uh, very excited to be a part of this journey and, and have partners uh, such as all of you. Um, to help us with that. So thank you again all for joining us. Thank you very much. And rock on women. <laughs> well, no, rock on women rock. Women rock, women rock, rock on. Hashtag women rock. rock. Yeah. Rock on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll cut all that out. <laughs> Huge thanks to our special guests, Adrian Palmer, editor-in-chief of Screen Printing Magazine, Victoria Jones of Inbound Inc., Kristen Souza, and Jennifer Shaw of Rock US for participating today. As always, thank you for spending time with us this week. Tune in next week or at your convenience on wherever you listen to your podcast by searching Rock Shop Talk. That's R-O-Q Shop Talk. On our next show, we'll feature The Buck Starts Here and Service, general tips, FIR requests, and technical advice for screen printers. If you'd like to join the live Zoom hangout or even request to be on the show, please visit rock.us slash rock shop talk. If you found today's episode helpful, the greatest accolade we could ask for is for you to recommend it to a friend who you think may find it helpful as well. Please like, share, and subscribe on social media. Until next time, rockers, press onward. Rock.